I've been using the 85 liter Dakin split roller as my primary travel bag for the last 12 months, and it's been a solid bag in some places. In others, it's showing that it might be just a little bit too flexible depending on what you pack. Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter with my review of the Dakin 85 liter split roller road tested after one year of continuous use and travel. Road tested is a series where I take a piece of travel gear or tech and I review it over a very long period of time to see how well it holds up. And of all the categories of stuff that I review in road tested, luggage is probably the one that gets the most beat up. It probably gets the most wear and tear over the shortest period of time. And when it comes to the Dakin 85 liter split roller, there is a lot, a lot I like about this bag, but I'm also realizing it's a little bit more niche than I thought. First things first though, this bag is fairly durable, but it does show the marks of being tossed in trunks, thrown in airplanes, and sliding down luggage carousels. You can see the scuff marks here on the polyester that covers the hard plastic shell on the back, and I'll be curious to see how well this holds up over extended use, since that fabric gets a beating and doesn't have any flexibility against the shell of the bag. The corner guards do have their fair share of scratches and scrapes, which is to be expected, and the hard plastic handle slash stand on the bottom, it is scuffed, but the damage is mostly cosmetic and not structural. The polyester fabric used around the Dakin split roller has held up well, probably the best of the exterior components, and any hesitations I had about it being too thin or puncturing easily have gone away. The handle here, though, has had a good amount of wear. You can see the whole indentations on the grip getting worn down, it's more than I would expect for a bag that's just a year old, and being soft rubber, this is something I'll keep an eye on. When it comes to the overall durability of the split roller, I would say for a bag of this price range, this class, it's doing slightly better than average. So like a B- minus or a C+, plus. so it's a lot better than cheaper bags, it's doing a lot better than cheaper bags, but for a bag in this price range, I was expecting that it would be doing a little bit better over just a year of use. But there is one part of the split roller that hasn't really held up very well. There's this thick rubber that goes around the split roller, and in my initial review, I mentioned that it might be a weak point of the bag. It's scuffed and scratched pretty well here, which isn't surprising given that this is rubber and mainly designed to provide some protection to the bag from laying on its sides, but it has begun warping. You can see this bulge on the sides, which also includes the plastic back of the split roller, and I think this is happening due to pulling the compression straps tight with a bag that's relatively full. Not stuffed or packed to max capacity, but just full. The straps then naturally pull on the plastic, and that causes these sides to bulge. And I'm not the only one who's been experiencing this, it's just something that happens due to the way the 85 liter split roller is designed. I don't think this will immediately break the split roller or make it unusable. It's just something that I would want to keep an eye on over time to see how much the warping continues. Like maybe it's going to affect the structure of the bag, but for now it's okay. It's just more of an eyesore, but it's something that I'll like to keep an eye on. But it does cause the split roller to be even more front leaning than it already is. That weight shift makes the split roller act like it's top heavy, and when the bag is upright, puts even more pressure on the bulging areas of the bag. One fix for a future version would be an additional compression strap across the middle, so you would have three evenly spaced ones to better distribute the pressure on the sides. Another thing that would also help relieve some of the pressure on those compression straps is more compression straps, but this time compression straps in the interior, especially for the main compartment, because the way it's designed right now, this thin zippered mesh is the only thing keeping the contents inside. It doesn't provide any support like compression straps would and only adds to the belly the split roller gets when it's full since your stuff tends to settle toward the bottom without any interior restraints. This handle on the side, I wish there was one on the other side giving you more grip options. Left-handers, you'll know what I'm talking about. This handle is placed in a part of the bag that also pulls up on that bulging area which is already a weak part of the bag and adds to more warping. Like I said, I don't think this is going to make or break the 85 liter split roller. Right now, it's just an aesthetic eyesore, but the bulge is noticeable and it's something I'm going to want to keep an eye on. It's something you're going to want to keep an eye on as you use this bag. So after a year of use, we're seeing this amount of bulge and maybe, maybe that's as bad as it's going to get. But maybe in two, three, four, five years, that's going to get even worse and start affecting the structure of the bag. Now looking at some other parts of the bag, the wheels, they are solid. They still roll perfectly, look good, and can take a beating. The grip handles too are firm and the stitching is intact with no fraying or loose threads. I don't think those are going anywhere anytime soon. And the last thing I'll say about the design is the weight. 
So I know this is a larger bag. It's a bag that's sort of on the larger size, but at nine pounds or about four kilograms, it is a little bit heavier than you might expect. And it feels a little bit more unwieldy because of the way it's designed. It's got this box shape. So when you pick up one of the handles, it doesn't really contour around your leg or around your thighs. So it's just a little bit heavier and a little bit more awkward to carry. It might help if Dakin were to round this hard part of the bag just a little bit, just enough space to get your leg to have some room when you're walking, when you're carrying it with the side handle. On the interior too, there's some design choices that I think could be done better. These split wings on the bottom of the front compartment are there so you can collapse the bag when it's not in use. But even when you're not leveraging the front pockets, when you are using this bag, you kind of need to use these wings if you want the bag to have any chance of sitting upright. But those split wings do eat a tiny bit into the space as well in the corners. You could, of course, stuff some socks or something in this little gap, but it's a little bit of an awkward fit. Now, one feature of the split roller I haven't used very much are those two front pockets, which are zippered. They do have some depth, so you can actually pack them up kind of full. But if you do, the bag leans forward even more than it already does. So I haven't ended up using them. I haven't really needed it, but they're there and they give you a little bit more space if you want to pack this bag up really full. So the durability of this bag so far is good. Although the design doesn't really support a bag that's this large and going to be packed with that much stuff. So it really doesn't support the kind of weight that you probably will be carrying in this bag, but it's not all bad news. The three compartment system in the split roller does eat a bit into the internal space, but I found I really like having this organization. You can quickly access your toiletries, for example, and separate dirty laundry easily. And having the clamshell style opening makes it convenient for getting the gear or clothes you need without having to dig too much into the bag. I also like that I don't have to baby this bag or treat it particularly nice. Like it can be thrown around and rolled across concrete and I'm not worried about it falling apart. And overall, I still like the look of the Dakin split roller, especially in all black. It's sleek, but still has a distinct character. So if you're shopping for this bag, I would think about it in these two ways. If you're going to pack this bag up with a lot of clothes, more clothes than gear like ski boots or tripods or things that are sort of awkwardly shaped or bulky. If you're going to pack this bag more with clothes, if you know you're going to pack it more with clothes and up to 85% of capacity. So if you're going to get it mostly full, maybe not all the way, then this bag is going to start to show once you go over that 85%. The design flaws are going to start to show because this bag isn't really made to inflate. It's not really made to be stuffed and sort of just, you know, get kind of bulked up like that. It really, really likes to be in its rectangular shape. So if you're shopping for a larger bag in the 80 liter range and you're going to be packing it mainly with clothes and very close to capacity, then the Dakin split roller might not be the best bag for you. They're going to be some other choices which I'll link to down in the description but if you're going to be filling this up with clothes and gear like I said snow boots tripods things that are bulky that are not going to really sort of expand in the bag even if you fill it up close to capacity then the split roller is a better design and maybe a better bag for you in that case so for a mix of clothes and gear the Dakin split roller might be the right fit even if it still is a little bit flexible that's my road test and review of the Keen 85 liter split roller. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week and I'll see you in the next video.